Alright, what's going on attack? Welcome back, I'm Skylent Shore, and today I wanted to give you my first impression review of Rising Thunder, a free-to-play upcoming fighting game. Now this is going to be more of a review style kind of thing, I've been playing it for a couple of hours here. Now I'm by no means a fighting game master, I do enjoy fighting games, I like fighting games ever since like the original freaking Killer Instinct, Mortal Kombat, the arcade days, guys, you remember? And uh, I've been kind of getting back into the genre now with Mortal Kombat X, the new Killer Instinct for example. Uh, Street Fighter 5 and well, I guess Rising Thunder because I'm actually really enjoying it And I think I will be consistently playing this game. So spoiler alert. I like this game I guess that's my review Um, but I just want to kind of go over some of the basics of the gameplay I know I'm gonna miss some shit guys tell me in the comments below Obviously, okay, so Rising Thunder what makes it different from other free-to-play fighting games is that it's actually very standard Okay, so for a fighting game, you know in the sense of AAA console games and also free-to-play PC games yeah, um, it's pretty standard. It's very much its usual, kind of similar to Street Fighter, uh, you know, Mortal Kombat-esque. Like, it's got that, it's it's very usual. It's got meter, it's got all the staples that was pretty much created by, uh, I don't know, a couple of the, you know, the big fighting game names, you know, like Street Fighter. So, uh, I could say that a couple of characters, they are, um, they are Shoto-esque. Which is, which is the character is kind of similar to Ryu or Ken uh, from Street Fighter, so you do have a couple of fireballs, you got a couple of spinning kicks, and, uh, but, but this game actually kind of changes up the formula a little bit. Now, if you play fighting games competitively, or if you play fighting games seriously, you're probably going to enjoy this game as a free-to-play game, uh, but it does change around some things. You have your light punch and heavy, or light attack and heavy attack with your X and Y, and by the way guys, yeah, you can use the keyboard for this. I, I don't know if you want to do that. Maybe you could pretend like it's a fighting stick or something. I think you're probably going to pick up a controller or actually go out and pick up a fighting stick, by the way. But for reference, I'm going to be using the Xbox controller for the button layouts, okay? For the hotkeys. So anyways, you have your X and then your Y, which is your normal attacks. And then you have a throw. And then you also have a super ability, which you need meter for. You can also break. You can cancel little different attacks and stuff with meter. You can also... Um, combo break other things with meter so you need to use and gain meter okay meter is pretty important in fighting games that have meter it generally is very important so meter is used for doing really big ass combos and it's, it's kind of a mechanic to get people back in the fight if they're a little bit if they're losing a little bit um it's also just to, it makes everything a little bit more explosive and it makes it ever, everything a little bit fair you know so you're not getting trapped forever in an infinite combo you can combo break it however you can fail combo breaks which i just found so that's that's pretty cool anyways so you have your light attack and heavy attack with X and Y. You also have a um, your right trigger, your A and B. These are actually, you see on the bottom left of the screen it says A, B, Y. Um, I, for some reason Y on the Xbox controller is actually not uh, allocated to that spell. It's actually right trigger. But anyways, uh, so right trigger is a special attack. B is a special attack and A is a special attack. All these are special attacks and you can actually do air variations of these special attacks or just do them in the air sometimes. Um, but these have cooldowns. You know, you can't just do them. I think this is interesting because uh, normally in fighting games, you have to memorize like different special moves. You know, it'd be like quarter circle forward and then X for a fireball. Uh, or that's down and then forward X uh, so that you can do a fireball in this game You can just like press a button and like it can do some different abilities So not everything is a crazy complicated combo there are I think some crazy cool combos But I think mostly the game wants to focus on like manual moves, you know, it's not automatic combos There are some people who have like abilities that kind of automatically combo uh, But for the most part, I think it's just the right mix of um, Complexity, you know, like it's adding in some sort of like MOBA elements because you do have have spells or abilities and you can even change out loadouts which is actually something like a theme that we're seeing with uh, more fighting games coming out where we have different variations of the same exact character instead of just having Shoto uh, variations of them so yeah 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 we you can actually change out some abilities it's like two or three or just a few per character maybe we're even gonna get more variations per character later on or maybe we'll just get more characters it is a free-to-play game I think that's probably expected but uh, yeah so Dude, there's a, there's a lot of complexities in this game to go over. I'm, I definitely am gonna miss some stuff So if you guys play Rising Thunder, please educate the viewers in the comments below um, But I do like the abilities. I think that is interesting. However, it uh, it makes things a little bit predictable in a way I think that's a good thing though. Yeah for competition You kind of want to uh, have a little bit of predictability So if somebody uses a big super attack or something and they whiff it You know that they can't do it for like three more seconds So that's your time to shine you need to go in and do this stuff and it's really cool because of these special abilities 
abilities with cooldowns. In this fighting game, we can actually have bigger, more explosive, more unique attacks and abilities than we've seen in most other fighters. Most other fighters have to, you know, balance issues, otherwise you can just spam like a super big attack all the time. Um, this way we can have really big, awesome special abilities without them using meter, without them being, you know, mega or super hyper attacks or whatever. So I think, I think that's really cool. Now one character, Crow, he can actually go invisible, uh, which is kind of similar to actually a uh, killer instinct character. Um, and so, you know, some other fighting games, there's, there's sometimes an invisible character. But anyways, he can go invisible and that's just freaking awesome, okay? It's kind of balanced because it's just a sphere, but you just press a button, you go invisible, and then you can use your other special attacks. However, to balance it, his other special attacks give away his position, right? Because they glow and everything. Um, he He's a really fast character, he can kind of juggle a little bit, but this is really important. He might be su a pseudo juggler, and uh, th there's some other characters though that kind of have different roles. You know, you have like a zoning characters, you, ha you have your kind of usual Shoto characters. I like Shell. Shell is probably my favorite character aside from Crow, because she's pretty fast, um, but she has a really quick fireball attack, and she kind of just like her design overall kind of reminds me of Metroid or Mega Man. So I like her, I think she's pretty interesting. Her abilities are just really balanced, you know, she's got some pretty good zoning potential. She's really mobile, so even if somebody does get close to her, she can move pretty quickly or just like knock them the fuck away. So that's pretty awesome. There's one character that I hate, and he's a grappler, and I just, I could not win with this guy for the life of me. He's so slow, but if he can actually get in close to the enemy, or wait until they get in close to him, uh, then he can actually grapple with them and do his abilities, uh, just really close range. But, you know, because he's very slow, I don't quite prefer him. I like really fast, agile characters. Shit, if they could just, like, non-stop fly, I'd play the shit out of him, which I, I do in games that allow that kind of crazy stuff. But yeah, each character is pretty unique. I, I definitely like it. They definitely have different nuances to them that make them un unique. Probably, I would say, even just like for starter players, it's pretty easy because of the different abilities. You can clearly see that all these characters fill a different niche and you can utilize them in such ways as a new player. You don't have to master their entire mechanics or the entire mechanics of the fighting game to start having fun with the game, which is cool. However, I do want to say that there is a very high skill cap. There are some times when I'm fighting an opponent and they completely destroy me. Yeah, that, that's... I mean, they're not even, like, that high of a rank above me, but because they understand, like, actually some of the mechanics of the game, well, they, they just, yeah, I'm, de I'm dead. I can't, I can't fight it. So, it's one thing that I just learned, right, is the whole, um, you can actually extend your combos. So, you can do your normal and light attacks. Every time you do an attack, it kind of pushes the enemy away, so you can't just spam attacks. Um, but, however, what you can do is you can cancel some of your attacks and some of your abilities into other abilities so that you can continue and chain your combo. This does cost meter, so you can't just do this infinitely unless they maybe are in a corner. Then again, they can still combo break you, which causes them to lose a little bit of meter. But, uh, yeah, basically, uh, you... You can do a lot in this game. You can break your own combos, break your opponent's combos, cancel combos. Um, what? What else can you even do? You have your different abilities and how you chain your different abilities together. Some of them are a little bit more fluid than others. Sometimes you want to, like, mix in some normal attacks. You can do, like, a, a lot of really creative things in this game. You're not too limited, which is really important. You want a lot of creativity in fighting games to allow people to kind of paint with their fighting style. And I think that's really important. You, when you go to these competitions, you want to be talking about, like, a pro player's style. Like, oh man, he's so good at doing those jumping um, fireballs and zoning and I don't know, that's like, that's his thing, right? That, that's kind of what you want. And in this game, you have a lot of character with these individual characters. Now the art style though, uh, it's... I think it's pretty cool. I, I really do like, like, you know, talking about character. I do kind of like it. It's, uh, it's kind of robotic, so it's not gonna have as much character as something that you could put, like, clothes on, you know, like, like, Ken, right? Like, Ken is Ken. Everybody knows Ken, everybody knows Ryu. Even though they're basically all very similar mechanically characters, uh, they just aesthetically look so different, and they're like the poster children, you know? So, they, those kind of games have a lot of character. Killer Instinct, you know, Mortal Kombat. But robots, right? Like, how... You know, they, I mean, for, for being a robotic game, Game, I think it does actually have a lot of character because it kind of went for a comical cartoon kind of look to it It's not super duper serious, uh, but, but also because it is kind of clean and cartoon. It's actually very clear You know, there, there's not a lot of noise actually There's uh, some Street Fighter maps and stuff that are just so noisy. It's so hard to actually see same thing with Killer Instinct um, But this game it's very clear you can clearly see the opponent He has a very clear outline especially against the backdrop then again This is the alpha build so this is the only map that we are playing on and I don't know if we're gonna have more complex maps later. Hopefully though, they're gonna still kind of be a little bit simplistic. I imagine they will, it being a free to play game that kind of just tends to be the thing. You know, a little bit more on the t lower tone kind of side. Yeah, I'm not saying it's like a lower production value, but like, you know, it's just kind of like a little bit, a little bit lower. <laughs> okay, so 
yeah, it's really easy to see the opponent, and it's just very clear. Everything's happening very clear. Oh, but however, I do need to mention that right now in the alpha build, I'm not quite having a great experience uh, because it seems like the netcode isn't quite optimized yet. Then, it, guys, then again, I know it's alpha. It's definitely going to improve. I can, I can feel, I, can, I know it because of how solid it is in alpha. I know, but there, there I just want to talk about this. So the game, it, it clearly on the right side, it says the game is running at 60 FPS, and sometimes it says it dips down to 59 for some reason. Um, but even though it says it's running at 60 FPS, I'm not seeing 60 FPS. Like, I know the game is running at 60 FPS, but when my character is doing some certain fast moves, the animations themselves are not animated at 60 FPS, or like they're, they're skipping some animations. And I believe that that could be due to the netcode. Maybe I'm just, you know, that's like a netcode latency thing, uh, so there is going to be some stuttering and skipping, but uh, for the most part, I didn't have too much trouble. I think, I think the netcode is okay, and that's a really important thing in fighting games. It literally ruined all the PC Naruto games, and I, I like that. It's a spectacle fighter, it's fun. I know it's not too competitive, but whatever. I think it's fun, guys. But seriously, legitimately, don't buy those on PC. You're gonna have a horrible day. Ruined, completely ruined because of the latency. Uh, halfway on console as well, but uh, yeah, so this game, it's actually doable. I would like to see it better though. And uh, I don't know about the animation thing, if that is tied with the netcode, but yeah, I, I need that to be a little bit improved uh, because in a fighting game, I need to actually see every single frame. Every single frame is valuable to a fighting game player, so I need them frames, and that would be nice. Thank you. Okay. So, yeah, the game, it looks good. I would like to see some more levels, obviously. I want to see more characters because of the, like, you know, the ability thing that they got going on, very similar to MOBAs, and because you can actually switch out some of these abilities, I want to see more characters because I want to see what they could do with them, you know? I, I, I'm not so much, like, the characters or the aesthetic because it's robots, you know, I don't... I don't know. It's it's whatever. I don't really care about how they look, but I mean, I guess they're kind of funny. But what I really want, I really want to see some of these unique abilities, because I I did enjoy the majority of characters on here, except for some of the slower paced characters. Not too much of a fan of the slower paced characters. I like like to kind of be a little bit more balanced or more on the agile side. Um, but for for the characters that are agile, I really love them. You know, but it's just that's not my personal opinion. I'm not really reviewing the game based on the characters that I like or don't like. But you know. Uh, so for like Street Fighter, right? I like I like Ken. I like the new Ken in Street Fighter V and Killer Instinct. And Killer Instinct, I like every single character. Um, for this game, I like about half the characters. Um, be because the game, I feel like okay, it's really fast, right? Like your uh, your even your heavy attack comes out pretty fast. Like your attacks can come out really fast. You can do some pretty crazy combos, but your mobility in the game is not super duper fast. You you don't have too many uh, mobility abilities. Not too many. No. Uh, but like a lot of abilities that have mobility kind of have either a charge up to it or like you go backwards first and then forwards It's really more balanced and in that sense like the game is fast-paced It's a really fast like fighter like if you press X like a couple times like you're gonna punch like almost as many times as you press X Like I really love that agility However, when it comes to moving on the screen, which of course, you know as a fighting game screen real estate is really important Being able to move back and forth that fast is kind of OP I can understand the balance issues, but I would like to see more characters that kind of utilize that um so I just I just want to say that you know if you're a fan of Killer Instinct, which is like a fucking fast fighter, you mm, will probably sit on the fence with this game. It's fast, you know, with your attacks, but your actual mobility not so much. But then again, that's a balance thing. And again, I think you can use meter. This might be only a couple characters, but you might be able to use meter to actually move a little bit faster. So maybe that's how they balance it. Again, guys, I am no fighting game master. I'm just playing it for like a couple hours here. I, I really like Crow. I really like Chell. I think I'll probably be maining those and playing the game, but I am going to be playing the game. Now, one thing that you guys maybe have been uh, noticing in the background audio is that each of these different characters have a foreign language that they are speaking. I believe Chell is Spanish. And then Crow might be Japanese or Chinese, but what's really interesting is that all these different characters have their like own unique language that they they do actually speak, and it, it kind of adds to the character, which is really important because, like I mentioned before, all these are kind of robots. You know, it's not like actual people with their own unique clothing. Uh, you you don't get to actually see the people, so in that sense, it kind of diminishes their character. But because you do hear their voice. You know, that's where the character is going to come from, right? So it makes sense to have all these different pilots come from different nationalities and cultures speak differently and like literally speak their own language. And I think that's awesome. There's there's so many games where I'll play like an Eastern fighting game, right? And I'll just set all the language to the actual native language because I don't know. I like that culture. I think that's fun. So Rising Thunder, I mean, I, can I clap for that? I think that, I think that was a cool idea. To actually ha give people like their own different languages. It would be weird if they all just spoke completely fluent American or, or British English. Like that would just be so weird. So 
Really awesome character design there. Even though I'm not a fan of the robots, I guess you could say. I'm more of a fan of like the hardcore look of Killer Instinct. Um, but this is actually really good. And like I said before, the art style, even though even if it's not your cup of tea, competitively, it's really clean. Uh, you know, it's clutter less. So I think it's really easy to see these characters and it's, it's probably going to be a very competitive game. Which is probably what I'm going to leave off here on my first impression review. I definitely missed some very complicated mechanics. I know, remember in the comments below. But I do want to say that, yeah, I've been playing this for a couple hours. In a lot of games, I kind of get the gist of really quickly. Uh, sometimes I do throw them under the bus if I think it's shit. This game, I think it's really good, and I can already tell, because I have not mastered the game, uh, because it's actually taking me so long to get into this game, even though I like fighting games and I enjoy fighting games, I can tell that it's actually going to be pretty good. It, it might be competitive. This is probably going to be the competitive fighting game. Now, I know we have Rise of Incarnates, and I know there's, like, like Eggnog or something like that, like Nosgoth ripoff. There's a couple of fighting games, Bunny Ears, that are out there, but Rising Thunder is the standard fighting game that's going to be free to play, that's gonna be competitive. It's it's probably going to be. I heard some really good things from a lot of people who are, you know, fans of fighting games and are pros, like go to these pro tournaments like Evo and stuff, and they say Rising Thunder is pretty alright. So I think I think I'm gonna jump on that bandwagon and say Rising Thunder is a two thumbs up. It is definitely fun. Okay? So Go try it out as soon as you can. If you can get to the alpha, I think it's actually worth trying to get into the alpha. Even though I said the netcode is a little iffy, it's the game is completely playable in the state that it is in. So you might want to go try and, and start uh, working on your mechanics there so that you can compete with these people. And it does already have a ranking system, by the way, guys. So there's that. Thanks for watching. I'm Skyline Shore with Attack Gaming. This was my first impression review of Rising Thunder. I am going to be continuing to play this game. I think it's a fun game. And if you guys want to see more content on that, give a like and subscribe so you can stay notified of, you know, this game or other first impressions that we got and of top tens and, you know, just a lot of gaming stuff, man. Okay. So, again, thanks for watching and we'll see you again next time. Welcome back, Attack. Today, we're going to be talking about the top 10 free-to-play MMOs for this year, for 2015. And I think across all the genres for free-to-plays, we've seen so much innovation in MOBAs, in MMOs, in, like, card games. We've seen so many new things this past year. And hopefully, maybe, probably so, 2015 is going to be just as exciting.